what what is if people are feeling that their financial situation is not warranting them giving money away to people and they really only can do a minimal amount what what's the minimal amount that people could give that would still be supportive and helpful to you every dollar counts i would say that so if you can donate it it means so much and and every dollar counts. I mean, that's, you know, crowdfunding. If everyone gave a few dollars, we would be in such a different position uh, than, than where we are. So I'll thank, thank you for bringing this up, but we absolutely, every dollar counts. And if you're, you know, if you can, if you want to get organized, you know, meet with a group or contact us or have a meeting in your community, we, do things like people contact us and say, can you please come talk to my local environmental group? Can you talk to this local group of parents? Or I have a cell tower going up. Can you come and talk to our community? Um, so this is, that would be so helpful as well. We have to start speaking about this and um, every dollar goes to a good cause. We are a nonprofit, so we do not, uh, you know, there's no one making a profit. In fact, um, the amount of volunteer hours is quite astounding for our organization. Uh, it's, I mean, I work all the time. Um, we so, all work all the time. Um, so let's assume though that we say, <clears throat> you seem very nice, but you know what? It's, it's just a pain in the neck. I'm not gonna make a donation. I really just got other things. I'm not gonna do it. I, I'm sorry. Let's assume environmental trust, just, you know, no one else does and you run out of money and you close up. Who will take, what, what, who will do the work that you're doing? Like, assume you guys just go away, give up, say we've had enough and we're moving on. What are the other groups like you that are doing just as much work and will take this over and will be just as effective if you didn't have the financial support? I don't know any groups that are doing what we're doing solely, actually. There are some groups that are involved in doing this along with other other issues but in terms of our focus on publishing research because we publish so this our scientists and scientific advisors and you can go to the website to learn more about our advisors our scientists who publish um and they are some of the most eminent uh scientists working in the field of environmental health um, and we educate policymakers and raise awareness. So I don't know who else is doing all of those things focused on wireless and 5G solely. That's where all, uh, not completely all, because actually we do do other environmental issues and we sign on to efforts and we support, um, you know, work on lead and air pollution and, and toxins in children's toys and so forth. Um, and other environmental health issues, but this is where we majority are working actually. So Children's Health Defense does some um, issues on 5G and wireless radiation and NRDC, the Natural Resources Defense Council um, has, they put an amicus brief in our case, but they're not doing um, the everyday work that we're doing on this. So we hope that there will be more that that these groups will be doing more. There's Consumers for Safe Cell Phones um, as well, um, but I, I know that the time is gonna come when there's gonna be more organizations that are all working on this issue, more focused in a more focused fashion. Could we put the, the Environmental Health Trust website up one more time? Just wanna look at one more thing there with everyone. Um, and can you click on the actual donate tab so I can look at that for a second? Thank you. Just see what it. We says. also have a Patreon program where when we um, that you can go to. So we will record talks and do them live and send that to our patrons. So starting at I think it's you know starting at two dollars. Some give twenty five dollars a month. Some give two. Some give fifty. Some people give us even more than that. And then you can be on when we record with our experts. And then we also have a YouTube channel where we put everything so you can watch 
a lot of these presentations. Okay, so everyone, just so you know, um, I don't have a, any kind of royalty arrangement with Environmental Health Trust. We have no financial arrangement with them, but I am, the reason I'm talking about donating money to them is I'm just being selfish. I'm not even being nice. I'm just saying for me, I want to live in a world where um, wireless radiation is not a health concern to me. And I'm concerned that if Theodora decides that she doesn't feel like doing this right. and that there's not enough people supporting her and she says, ah, no one seems to care, um, you know, what's, what's the point, then we have no one fighting for us. So the fact that she has been willing to, you know, it's, it's, take her personal time and so has Deborah Davis to fight for us, um, it's like two really, really incredibly smart people work for you full time and they're not asking for much. So um, I'm just concerned that they might one day say, eh, no one seems to care. I'll just, um, I'll watch Netflix. I'm not going to do this anymore. So we really do want to support them because there is a very tiny group of people fighting like crazy for us. And these people in their nonprofit are just doing everything they can and they need our financial support and they need our emotional support. Like if you give a small amount, at least it lets them know that people care and are on their side. So I hope everyone will consider going to ehtrust.org and continue to support them on a regular basis as if you think this is important stuff, they're fighting as well as anyone I could imagine. Okay. Well, so thank you so much. You're welcome and thank you for what you've been doing. Okay, so now let's assume someone goes, all right, I, I hear what you're saying, wireless radiation, you mean my cell phone, you mean my wireless router, you mean my wireless internet. What's, what's this thing now I'm hearing about um, 5G? Is that different than wireless radiation? Do I need to be concerned about that? So what, what is this all this stuff about 5G that I've been hearing about for se several years, but maybe other people are not? What's different about regular wireless radiation and than 5G and why should I care about 5G? So if you see 5G on your phone, this is not what I'm talking about for the most part. So you, if you bought the new 5G phone just recently, then, then it is about the 5G that I'm about to talk about. But when we talk about 5G, we're talking about fifth generation wireless. So when you first got phones, it was just voice, right? Then it was uh, voice and texting. And then it became voice texting and then there were pictures uh, and, and, and more data. So each of those are generations. And now 5G is about, at, well, the industry promises super fast downloads, movies that move very quick uh, to the phone. But it's also going to be tying together machine to machine. It's not just about the phones. There's a uh, machine communication, wireless networks that involve drones, all kinds of security uh, networks that are in place, especially in, in cities and urban areas, uh, self-driving cars, although self-driving cars do not have to have 5G to be working. So there's all these new wireless systems that industry is developing, trying out, testing on people, uh, and they state that they need this new 5G infrastructure, which means that they, or they claim that they need to put cell antennas, short cell towers in front of our homes in our neighborhoods. Because before with phones, uh, the, the, the previous generations, you could have cell towers that were up high, rather far away. They weren't in neighborhoods, in residential neighborhoods. But now industry is saying, well, we need to put these 5G antennas in neighborhoods in front of homes, 10, 20 feet in front of you know, your bedroom window. However, it's a little complicated and the, and the complexity is so the industry sort of uses this talk of 5G, but really what they're putting in is 5G and 4G. They're putting all this new 4G right into our neighborhoods. 5G is going to use these new wireless networks will use all the same frequencies that have been used in the past with 2G and 3G, actually. And then they're going to add in higher frequencies uh, for some networks that have never been used publicly before, which are higher frequencies. 
And they're also going to elevate overall. So 5G will increase the ambient, the environmental levels of wireless radiation at various frequencies, low, mid, and high band that we are exposed to because you're going to have all of these new networks, all of these new uh, antennas. And you're also going to have new smart things in your home and your environment. So it can be, we have on Environmental Health Trust a page on fine print warnings and there's smart, oh my gosh, there's there's smart ovens, there's smart washing machines, there's the smart speaker, there's smart video things you chat with, there's uh, all kinds of wireless devices, both in your home and then outside your home uh, that are elevating that level of wireless radiation. And wireless is radio frequency radiation, it's microwave radiation, and it has data traveling uh, information. These are information carrying waves. So 5G is going to increase radiation, use a lot of different kinds of frequencies, put short cell towers in front of our homes without our say, by the way, taking away, stripping away our authority to say yes or no. And, uh, and people are, many scientists, hundreds of scientists are calling to halt 5G because of the absolute lack of data uh, on long-term safety. And by the way, those higher frequencies are going to uh, interact differently with animals and especially insects that are flying, birds, you know, bees, uh, because of the, the different uh, size of the frequencies. There's research that's looked at impacts to insects and found that can resonate with them and have unique effects. Um, and it's a very high data rate as well. The pulsation, the modulation is different with 5G. So many things I could tell you about it, but it's um, it's kind of like more, more everything, more devices, more towers, mm -hmm. and uh, very, very uh, serious because you can't see it, but it's there and it's, there's gonna be more of it. And what's LTE and 6G, 7G and HE? Do these things, what are they? Do they exist yet? Well, LTE is used for 4G. Uh, that is what they're increasing uh, 4G antennas as well as 5G because 5G is going to use 4G as well. 4G is the backbone for 5G. So companies are saying, I need to put this cell tower in front of your house and take away your right to stop it. And we're going to be putting in these wireless facilities that have 4G antennas and 5G antennas. Now, 6G, 7G, those are the the next generation. The actually, the wireless industry is already working on, and the FCC or captured agency is already, you know, slating frequencies that they're going to be using old terahertz frequencies, even higher frequencies, never used uh, in a massive scale among the public uh, for those those next generation technologies. They're just running real fast without uh, taking time to, you know, people's health has been completely trampled. There was no pre-market safety testing for when phones first came out. There, there's never pre-market safety testing for long-term exposure to these, to this technology. It's not like a drug. If it were a drug, it'd be banned because there's so many side effects that have been reported, but we're not monitoring. There's no monitoring going on of the levels. There's no monitoring going on of the side effects that are reported. I mean, is there any on, there's even no database for it. There's no uh, post-market surveillance, you know, to see what's, what's happening. And people are reporting more and more effects. In fact, there was just some studies, I didn't talk about headaches, but researchers who are looking at headaches have been found time and time again. And a study just came out saying, smartphones is a new cause of migraines. These uh, researchers put, it's right there. It's the published literature has everything you'd ever wanna know. It's all there. And how do we know if there's 5G in our area? How do I know if I'm being exposed to 5G? Well, I can say that if you, don't have 5G now, you will have it later in most areas, maybe not the very rural areas. 
Um, one of the things we need is a way so that if you have that question, like, do I have 5G? I should be able to go online and find out, right? Like we have food labeling. Why don't we have labeling for what we're being exposed to? Because you can go to antenna search, uh, antenna search.com, I think it is, where you can type in your address and you can see where all the antennas are, but it actually doesn't have all of them now, especially in the era of 5G. It doesn't have, um, it has the macro towers, which are those big tall towers, but it doesn't have everything on it. Um, sometimes you have to go to your local municipality and ask them, where can I find the map of all the cell towers that you're allowing on county-owned land or city-owned land? Some communities have maps that you can go online and see, and then you can find the frequencies. But by and large, we're really not being informed about this information. If you live in New York City or if you live in certain cities, they are turning on 5G and they are testing networks. But it's not fully in gear right now because not everyone is using the 5G network as it will be used in time. So we're really at the beginning of it. And I, I didn't mention this, but the European Parliament actually their study service did a study. It's called the health effects of 5G. You can look it up, European Parliament, health effects of 5G. We have it right on our 5G facts page. And they concluded that the frequencies that will be used in 5G, that are the ones used in 2G and 3G, 4G, that they are um, probably carcinogenic and can affect uh, you know, fertility and, and, and possibly newborns. Uh, there's and that's the European Parliamentary Service and they go through all of the science. So um, this is an all hands on deck situation. If you are listening and you wanna get involved, find a local uh, 5G group or a safe technology group in your, in your community. Um, and if there's, you can contact us, you can go to Americans for Responsible Technology as well and find a group or start a group. But most states have groups at this point. And if we go and buy a new phone, <clears throat> mm. is there any way to turn off the 5G so that you don't connect by 5G? Or do you have to buy an old phone that doesn't connect? How do you, what do you do? Yeah, so there is now every phone is different. So I say what I'm about to say with that knowledge, and really they are different. So <clears throat> yeah, when you go to your phone settings, you will see a place where you can turn it on airplane mode. It'll have location, it'll have data, it might have hotspot, and it might have 5G and, and, and you can turn them off in some phones. If I were gonna buy a new phone, I would try to not get a 5G phone. And if I had to, for some reason, I would make sure before I bought it that you could turn off those antennas. In fact, a simple way to reduce not completely make it safe, but reduce your exposure is to always turn off antennas you're not using so that you're not having the radiation always being emanating because the thing about phones and wireless devices, which is so not smart, is that they are always radiating. They're always emitting uh, you know, wireless radiation connecting even when you're not using them. And it's a real waste of energy as well, but some of that energy that's being wasted is going into your body. So the wireless radiation is, that's coming out of the phone goes into you.